Friends, I'm quite a bit more stoked about this than I thought I was going to be. This is the anamorphic lens from Sandmark. It's, uh, they want me to do a review of this, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how the video looks first. Then I'm going to talk about how I edit the video and how you can make this video work for you because nobody's really talking too much about that. And then I'm going to do a review on the lens itself and tell you about the features and why I kind of love this thing. Like it's one of those, I've never shot with anamorphic before. So it's sort of like, where have you been all my life? And now it looks like I want to shoot everything with it. It has its applications. It has its pros and cons in certain situations. Forgive me, I kept my hand last night. At any rate, this is pretty killer. Sand mark. And uh, I'll talk to you more about what this does and how it functions in a second video or toward the end of this video, perhaps. On the back of your phone. What is on the back of my phone? Mm -hmm. It is a, it's getting ready to be a lens I'm gonna put on there just in a minute. I'm gonna see if it makes a difference. Okay. So this is with the anamorphic lens. I am shooting 38, 40 by 2160, and I will have to change the aspect when I'm inside of Premiere Pro. So folks, that was Nikki and I talking about the lens. This is just a regular 4K, straight out of my iPhone 7. That's what you're seeing. So notice the bushes on the left and right. And now look at it, that's standing in the same spot. I'm seeing entirely more, <laughs> like probably half again more video uh, left and right. So here again is another example. This is at the courthouse. I'm going to be standing in the same position for both shots. That's just the regular iPhone 4K. And there's what it looks like when I'm shooting anamorphic. So that flag wasn't there. The sign wasn't there. All that. It's just a super nice wide angle shot. Here's another uh, typical, just doing these for comparison's sake. Here's just a street shot in downtown Morganton. Uh, regular 4k and here it is in anamorphic and folks this is just really really nice being able to see all the extra uh, stuff here and it's just so much more cinematic looking in my estimation so I'm gonna we're gonna take a little bit of a little bit of a look at downtown Morganton my garden and all this is just shooting in my yard this morning the video I, sh I showed of me and Nikki inside it's a little grainy because you know it, the iPhone, I didn't have it set really well for low light. This was, of course, very early in the morning. I think this was like 6.45, and you're seeing a little bit of a change in exposure because I was in Movie Pro um, shooting in, a, in auto mode. So, but this is our garden, and here again, you know, you would not be seeing, you'd be seeing probably the middle, say, 60% of this. Not all the width out there, not that thing on the wall over there, or the... Uh, little flag over in the lower left you wouldn't see any of that so what do I think about this lens uh, you know <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of semi do a review um, as I talk about it it's very dramatic looking to me it, it's it's really nice I think for establishing shots uh, for landscape anytime you're shooting a beautiful landscape uh, mountains scenery beaches See those hummingbirds flying around there, around the hummingbird feeder over on the right. We have crazy battling hummingbirds. But, you know, this is just, just a really sharp, great little lens for this wide angle stuff. Um, I, I noticed just maybe the slightest bit of distortion left and right, but not really so much. Um, the thing I, I, I found out in using it just for a few days. It's not the kind of lens you want to move around with, and I've got an example of that in a minute. I'll show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> when you're walking with it, unless you have some sort of stabilization left, right, up, and down, you might, maybe if you had a nice gimbal, it would work fine. For panning around like this, it's great, but as you walk, if you tilt it left and right a little bit, then you'll notice some uh, kind of aberrations in the movement. Like I said, I don't think this would be something you want to just be walking around unless you had some stabilization. And you can see I'm standing in one spot and all these and just panning around. Right here I start to walk a little bit and you'll see what I'm talking about. And the distortions you're going to see as I move, you'll see some here in a minute. It's kind of wobbly looking. And that is because I'm changing uh, the, the um, I'm, I'm wobbling left and right in that uh, sort of, we're trying to say plain. Uh, and, and so you'll see that it doesn't 
without stabilization you're going to get a little bit of strangeness there right but this does give you an idea of, of how it'll work if you're walking with it without a gimbal but if you're just standing in a, in a spot and we know I, looking last night I watched a movie and uh, noticing how anamorphic shots are done they're typically not done walking around they're either panning or they're still shots where actors move around inside the frame but you're not necessarily moving the, uh, the camera or moving forward or back I should also say that none of these shots have been affected color wise at all I've, I've not used any filters, no lumetry, no LUTs, no um, yeah, anything. I also have cinema grade now. I didn't do that with any of this. I want you to see the colors that you get. And, uh, you know, I think it actually, the color might look a little richer when you add the lens to it. Uh, I don't know if they intended for that to happen. It seems to be, I don't know, it just seems to be a little richer than when I shoot straight with, from the, uh, you know, from the iPhone camera. This is the iPhone 7 I'm using. This is not even one of the latest models. That's our community house. It has pretty little bushes and stuff there around it. And uh, you know, I would never been able, from where I'm standing there, I would never been able to get that shot. This is what I kind of like. So typically to get this sort of, a, of an angle before, I would just get back on the other side of the street and then I could get the whole width of the community house. But you know, you're moving 30, 40 feet back to get that shot. So you're moving away from your subject. Now you can stand close to your subject. And, uh, and, and get a much sharper image, you know, clearer, better color when you're closer to it, and uh, you know, and, and, and get the entire shot without having to step back from it. Um, it, it takes probably 10 or 15 seconds to put the lens on. Uh, so, you know, and you, you probably don't want to walk around with it, you know, big time carrying it in your pocket or anything. Uh, with the lens on there, I don't know. I mean, I think I'd be careful doing it. It's constructed very well, but still, I'd be careful doing it. Um, I would just carry it in the bag. You know, the, the, the luxury of me with my iPhone is I don't really use my iPhone for anything except video and drone flying now. So I don't really use it for my phone anymore. I have two phones. I kept my old iPhone just because I loved being able to do uh, Movie Pro video. <clears throat> so this is all. That's the other thing I should say is I'm using Movie Pro software to shoot this. So I think your typical iPhone video is about 30 or 40 megs per second 4K. Watch this lady. She doesn't think she's in the frame there. And typically she wouldn't be. She thinks I'm just shooting a bit of, bit, bit of video of scenes there. She didn't even realize she was still in the frame. But what I was going to say is Movie Pro allows you to shoot rather than at 30 or 40 megs per second. You can shoot at 137 megs per second which gives you awesome bit depth, great color, uh, just really superb video from an iPhone 7. I would highly recommend anybody get that and use it in tandem with this and you'll get just super quality video that looks like it comes from a, a premium camera. And uh, so now I'm, I'm interested in getting a uh, anamorphic lens for my Sony cameras because this uh, Sandmark lens is doing such a great job of giving me something I wasn't expecting I would be able to get from an iPhone. Um, just really nice. Every shot I shot with it, uh, they were there shooting some, uh, or blowing some leaves, so that's what the noise is here. That's our, uh, our cinema in town. This shot, next shot that I shoot down here, back up at the courthouse, I would have had to stand out in the middle of the road to get this with the flag in it and with the uh, sign over on the left and still get the courthouse and then I would have been farther back and it just would not have looked as good. So I'm doing another video that shows how I do this and how I use Adobe Premiere Pro to edit the video and create the aspect to make it right. Okay so back to the lens itself. This thing is a premium build. I mean it's there's nothing toyish or anything about it. It's a professional lens. Uh, at the time I'm doing this video it's about 159 bucks. So it's not something that's cheap. Um, the way it works and the way that I use it, as I said earlier, is with Movie Pro. So this is this mud. I'm going to go to, to the Movie Pro app, which is this right here. This does allow me to shoot at a very high bit rate. 
and I'm able to get the wide uh, shot here and shoot at about 137 megs per second. So that's how I use it and it works just great. To get the lens to work the way you want to, you want to get it as upright as you can. You've got a little white line on top up here and you use the case they give you. It has a little white line up here on top of the case. Maybe you can make that out. And you line those two lines up and then you know that you're shooting this you're shooting perfectly you don't want to use this lens and shoot this way with it i would not shoot in portrait mode i would always shoot landscape uh, that's going to be what's going to function <clears throat> this square piece when you screw it on it screws on you have to be very precise screwing it on and it's not going to probably line up just right but this little part here just twists whichever way you need it to twist until you get it set up just right and then then you're set up and you're ready to go and so the lens just, just it's a very well solid build i mean it's it's it feels like it's metal even i'm not sure if it is or not but it's not heavy at, at all it, i can cannot even really tell that it's on the iphone much maybe it adds just a little bit of weight it's not a very heavy thing of course it does come with a little bag if you decide you don't want to use the the case which some people may not want to i like the case so even though it's not as sturdy as the one I've used that I wasn't even in the past, I'm probably going to leave it on there. <clears throat> but it does come with this little clip thing so that you can clip, uh, you know, clip the lens on there. And of course, there's a little part that pops off there. So, and, and so you can clip it on your phone, use your existing, uh, your existing case for your iPhone. Me personally, I just highly rec would highly recommend doing this. It's slim, seems to provide some good protection. Just be careful with your with your phone. Of course, you do have a bag to carry the lens in, and there's a little cleaning cloth inside there too. You can also use the bag itself as a cleaning cloth, according to one of their videos. There's the cleaning cloth that comes with it. And of course, you definitely want to keep that lens good and clean. So yeah, <clears throat> this thing is a game changer for me. I really like it, and particularly for my landscapes and stuff, I'm going to be using this a lot. Or even interiors if they're well lit. If I'm wanting to get in a wide, get a wide shot, establishing shots. This is going to be the way to go if I'm going to shoot with, a, uh, with the iPhone. Peace to all who watch. Subscribe to the channel if you like.